Hi friend, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting and in this video we're going to take these tools that are in front of me and we're going to assemble and install a Culp controller. So if you're looking at Culp controllers, maybe you just bought one, it's in pieces and you don't know how to put this together, this video is your guide. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull our SD card out of the packaging and go ahead and install FPP on the computer. Then join me back here later in the video where we're going to assemble everything here, get it started and show you how to connect to it on your computer. Once you do have your controller assembled or maybe before that, uh, one of the first things to do is just to install FPP on the SD card that you have purchased. Now. Um, if you buy, once again, if you buy your controller from Culp Lights, you can get FPP on a card pre-installed all the way in the controller ready to go for you out of the box. And that's what I recommend. Because honestly, what he's charging for that service, uh, considering it saves you time, is like literally nothing because he pretty much only charges you a buck or two more than it would cost you to buy the SD card by yourself. And it's unwrapped, it's, you know, copied, it's good to go. So I recommend that. If you haven't done that though, um, and I'm purposely not doing that here, you just search FPP download or we'll have a link. Um, it'll take you to GitHub, which is a really confusing site if you're not like a web developer. Um, if you land on this page, for example, I do a lot uh, for things and I see this and I just, I literally can't figure out how to download the thing. But what you do, this is, it's not too complicated. It's not on the top here anywhere. It's actually on the side here on releases. And then you just find the latest one. I recommend using the latest. Um, if you're starting, there are some basic instructions here. You will download for a Culp controller, the this one, the first one that is a bbb.image.zip. And uh, once that's downloaded, as mine now is, we can go ahead and do two things. Uh, the first is we want to use the SD card formatter app. I've seen uh, multiple people say that it's just something that you want to do um, in order to format the card correctly. A lot of times I get an error when I do this. We'll see what happens. Um, I've had mixed feelings before where sometimes I get an error and it doesn't work. Um, I've either way. Yeah, here's the formatting failed. I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe overwrite format is what I need. Um, but even if it doesn't work, I've never had it actually, you know, break FPP. Um, so once that formats, yeah, it didn't work. That's okay. Uh, I'm just going to skip that. I know it's recommended, but on a new card, I haven't had an issue. I'm going to launch. Uh, so next I launch uh, the Etcher program, Bellina Etcher, Etcher on Windows. Again, on my, on my FPP tutorial, I'll show you how to do this. And there's a Mac alternative as well. Uh, you go flash from file, find the file you downloaded, select target. Um, this is different than just copying the file to your uh your sd card and then you hit this button you double check that you did everything um it says it's unusually large but it is a 64 gig card and then you let it go and this is going to take a little while um so you wait for it to finish and then when it's done all right and then when it finishes you should get this uh, success message you can close out the program and now your card's ready to actually insert into the Culp controller into the Beagle Bone. All right, so now we've got our SD card ready, it's time to assemble everything else. So I've got here the Culp controller, in this case a K16, um, but it could be any of the models. I purchased from Wired Watts, um, so I also got, I got the card, so it's right here, this tiny guy from Amazon. I purchased from Wired Watts, um, and when I opened the box, there is this piece of paper wrapped around that has some warnings about making the correct connection on the Culp. There is the Culp. There is the Beagle Bone, uh, which I believe I got the black. Did I get the black? Did I get the green? Who knows? No. <laughs> Seriously. Um, I'm not sure how to tell. And so we're going to open this guy. It's the black. Sorry. Black. And so a lot of times people buy these, and this is my first time, honestly, buying one that was not fully assembled. Um, I bought them from Culp before they put them all together. You can even get the, the SD card for not much more than just buying the card, and it's pre-formatted and ready to go. Um, so I do recommend that, but if you don't do that, if you buy from Wired Watts or wherever else in the future sells them, you then get the display separate as well. 
I think that's mostly so it doesn't break in transit. So I'm going to start assembling here. I'm just going to take the display. There's four pins here protected by this piece of foam. So we're going to take this foam and then we just line it up. There's a spot for the display on the circuit board. A box there. Oops. Right there. And then I just take this guy, just set it in. There's four pins. You can't mess it up unless I do. We'll find out. Uh, and then there's the beagle bone. So I've had other culps before, so I know how these go on. And that is that on the back here of the culp, there are pins sticking out, two rows. And they correspond with the pins on the beagle bone. Okay. Now the next question would be, well, what direction does it go? Now I believe, having done this before, it goes this way. And, and the reason, the way you can tell it goes is that there's the network port on the Beagle Bone Black and the power barrel, um, and they're going to face out, and they're going to fit in this space here. So when you push it on, it, it goes down all the way. So it's, it's kind of hard to mess up. Um, you just got to line up the pins. Again, they're, they're fairly robust, um, but I imagine you could break them if you, if you muscle it um, in the wrong direction. So just get them on a little bit. Push it down, take it home, all the way in, done. Okay, so now I've got that going, we're going to put our SD card in, okay? So there's an SD card slot um, in the bottom of the Culp here. Now, that is one thing to note, is when you buy them from Culp, they do offer an SD card um, extension. You may want to consider that just simply because the principle is that... Um, by the way, the pins in this case face down on the controller, but it's up in the way that I'm currently holding it. Um, you may want to consider that SD card extender just purely because when you mount this in your controller, uh, depending on how you mount it, this is probably going to be down. It's probably going to be inaccessible. And if something happens to that SD card, you need to swap it out. You're going to have to literally unscrew it, pull it out, and place it back in. Um, and so that's key as well. Um, the last thing we have to do is check our power jumper on these guys. So all that means is that on the Culp itself, there is a jumper to power from BBB from board, and it is in place, and that's where we want it to be. Now our nice warning label told us about this. It says, okay, um, you know, don't use the, the power connection on the side of the Beagle boat, okay? Um, because the Culp is going to power it through the board, which is just brilliant, smart, and exactly what we need. Um, so in that case, we're done. We are all set up, and now we're ready to boot this guy up. So I'm going to go ahead and connect a power supply, and then we're going to watch it boot up and connect to it on the PC. All right, so now I've got all my parts and pieces, and I'm ready to assemble this to at least turn it on. So first things first, I've got a power supply here, good old Meanwell LRS350. I've got a 16 gauge input cord for that LRS350. Got a screwdriver. Got this stuff from Wired Watts, no sponsorship at all from them, um, but I do appreciate buying from them because they do a good job. Um, and so we're gonna hook up our, our wires here. Having some electrical experience in my past, I do always want to tell you, don't work with live electricity. Be very careful if you don't feel comfortable hooking up your wires. Green to the ground, white to the neutral, and black to the live. Then don't do it if you're not comfortable. As long as you do it safely, it's going to be just fine. Keep it nice and snug, do it while nothing's live, you'll be good. Um, but again, if you're not comfortable, don't. Always also, with these mean wells and, and most screws, um, you're, you're going clockwise and you're placing these into the left side of the terminal so that as you uh, actually tighten it down, it nudges the wire inward into the terminal more than outward. That's just a little tip. Again, not essential, though I think it is a code compliance thing uh, with when you build houses and stuff. doesn't technically matter here, but it, it does help you. Um, so now we got our voltage plus and minus. We're going to connect these with some, some jumpers here. These are 10 gauge, uh, and they're going to go into the inputs of our Culp. Now, I only have one set of jumpers here today because I ran out. Um, and so normally you would look at your power load um, with any controller. Again, this is more about the Culps and not about um, an overview of controllers, but we, we have more videos on that. We have a lot on that inside of Learn Christmas Lighting Academy. 
Um, and you decide, based on your, your power that you've got coming out, are you coming both out of one power supply? If so, you may be able to come into the first terminal, jump to the second. You may bring two sets of cables to your power supply. Or if you're loading this thing up and you've done your power calculations, you find out, hey, I'm going to be over 80% uh, of 29 amps, which is like 24 on a mean well. Um, that's the quick math. And I'm going to go ahead in that case and, um, and use two power supplies. They're going to go separate to the two sides of the culp. Now, one more thing we did not check beforehand is there's another jumper on here that says input voltage select. By default, this one came from wired watts and it is set to 12 volt, but always check it. Even if they're supposed to always be set to 12 volt by the factory, people make mistakes. Sometimes things are inconsistent. If you set it to 5 volt and you hook up 12 volts, you will probably have problems. You may fry your controller. Uh, vice versa, the, the same may happen. Hard to say. Um, so... Make sure that's in the right place, and then we're ready to wire it up. So, voltage minus. Make sure we get those wires in there really good. Plus. It is worth noting as well, too, this is a bonus tip. If you get your power supply from wired watts here in the US they do open it they set the voltage switch which is on the side next to this bright yellow tape they set it to the correct 110 volt for US use um, that's something that if you don't do that the power supply will not turn on if you hook it up to 110 volt um, and then also they use this screw right here to adjust the voltage to I believe 11.8 11.9 volts good place to be um, so what we're going to do then is there is V and G on the culp side, um, V being voltage, G being ground. Um, in that case, you know, technicalities aside, it's really a, a negative DC power. It's not really a ground, but we're going to overlook that here. It's a little tight on the 10 gauge wire, but the thicker your wire is, the better. Um, you really can't go too thick on wire unless it doesn't fit in the terminal. So we got that one. It's not the prettiest connection either. If I were doing this for real, I would uh, strip that so that it was just cut that extra wire off. Like this red one fits really nice. You see that compared to the black one where there's a little bit hanging out. Um, so I would I would want to make it look like the red one for real use for for today. It's gonna be all right. Um, and then we're ready to go. So now we're going to go ahead, we're going to hook up power and our data, power, and then we're going to plug it in and uh, go over to the computer. So let's boot it up. I believe we've got a network cable here. Yep, this one's connected into my network. Plug that guy in, plug in our power. It lights up. Now I only have half of it lit up. Um, so we see, okay, I'm on the right side. Um, but we get fuse lights on the half that's lit up. We get blue lights on the beagle bone uh, activity lights showing us that we're happy. And then in just a second, we should see on the screen the FPP is loading information. Yep, FPP booting. Even has a wired watts on it. <laughs> oh, fancy. Um, honestly, I didn't know that was there. I don't know how it got there. Um, beats me. Because I think my old ones, my other ones that I bought from Culp say Culp lights. I don't know how they do this stuff. I'm not a computer engineer. And so it's going to boot up. It's going to get an IP address. Um, by default, there is a default IP address that they go to. Look to the FPP manual for that. It will display on the screen whatever the heck it is. So you even don't need the manual for that. Um, but it's going to display the IP address for me. It's going to get it from my router. And because it's getting it from my router, because I'm plugged into a network that has a router, uh, it's going to automatically be um, DHCP. And so what that means is that it's going to get an IP address from the router and I'm going to be able to, because of the way routers are typically set up, I'm going to be able to go to fpp.local on the computer. We're going to do that in a second. And I'm going to be able to see this and, and talk to it and uh, be able to get connected right to this and set up FPP. So let's go over there. All right. So we are here. We went to fpp.local. If that doesn't work for you for whatever reason with the way your network's set up, um, this IP address right here, not the exact one that I have, but 
Um, the one that's displayed on your screen will get you there if you're on the same network and uh, network settings are uh, great. It'll look a little wired lots of thing there. How do they do that? Who knows? Doesn't matter. Either way, uh, the last step to setting this up is just to go here, follow this warning here, go to storage settings. And you say grow file system. Yes. Um, it just takes, gives you more space on the, um, on the SD card to use the whole thing. And it's going to reboot this thing. So you hit reboot, you let it close, you reboot, and then you're good to go. At this point, you can follow my tutorials or anybody else's on the Falcon player. Uh, not only that, but if you're new to Christmas lighting, before you buy anything, I've got three things that I need you to know. I want you to know beforehand, and I package them up into a guide so that you can get started with this amazing hobby. It's over at learnchristmaslighting.com. Go grab it here. Be sure you subscribe, and then also check out this video that we've picked out for you that might help you on your Christmas light journey. We'll see you guys there. Thanks.